today we are going to learn how to read a DSM and how to apply partition. A DSM stands for a dependency structure matrix and DSMs are particularly good for representing and analyzing large complex systems. So here is a, here is a simple DSM uh, that's been constructed from a C and C++ code base for an open source project called ISO AG Link. And this DSM has two subsystems at the top level corresponding to the two directories of the ISO AG lib code base. Now, these sub subsystems inside the DSM are numbered. At the head of the rows, we, we number them one and two because there are two of them. And we see those same two numbers show up above the columns. We can expand a subsystem by clicking on the plus icon. And we have just expanded ISO AG lib to reveal the five subsystems inside it. So ISO AG lib contains star, com, driver, HAL, and util. And the number, and now the number of elements in the DSM, instead of going from one to two, now goes through one to six. And you see those same numbers appear at the top of the columns. To read a DSM, you simply have to read down a column. So let me just expand this to make it clear. If you read down column 1, since 1 corresponds to supplementary driver, then we notice that supplementary driver depends on star with a strength of 17. As you can see on the right hand side that the, what those dependencies are is in the information pane. It also depends on com with a strength of 1. It depends on driver with a strength of 7. It depends on HAL with a strength of 89 and it depends on mutual with a strength of 42. Star, on the other hand, does not depend on supplementary driver, does not depend on COM or on driver, but does depend on HAL and does depend on mutual, both with a strength of one. The, the numbers in the identity diagonal represent the size of the system. So the ISO AG lib uh, code base that we loaded had about 600 files and what this 50% number tells us is that the COM subsystem has 50% of those files, HAL has 24% of those files uh, and so on. We can further expand COM and we can we see that it in turn uh, contains a number of subsystems too and these are organized alphabetically as you can see. So the first one inside COM is part 1-0 the next one is part three, then part five, then part six, seven, uh, scheduler, ext, proprietary can, and so on. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll apply a partitioning algorithm to it to give it an architecture context. In order to do that, I have just selected com, and I go to the toolbar icon, and I pull down my partitioning algorithms. Latix gives you a number of partitioning algorithms, but the one that that's most useful is the component partitioner. So we'll just apply the component partitioner right now. And what it did was it reordered the subsystems inside COM. So scheduler, which used to be number nine, is now number 10. And ext.proprietary can, which used to be at the very bottom, is now number five. And this was done because the component partitioner reord reorders these subsystems to give you a block triangular structure. And we can see that here, what that there are no dependencies outside of these blocks that have been created, which are above the diagonal. And what this does is it reflects a layered view of COM. So for in, so what the partitioning algorithm did was to split up COM into three different layers. The layer at the bottom contains data link, network management, and scheduler. And we can see that that layer has no dependencies on the layer above it. The next layer contains ext, proprietary can, and applica application layer, and virtual terminal client. And you can see that it depends on the layer underneath it, but does not depend on the layer above it. The other thing that uh, the partitioning algorithm does is to identify subsystems which are coupled together. So we can see that data link, network management, and scheduler are coupled together. And in fact, notice that the numbers below the diagonal are larger than the numbers above the diagonal. And this is the, the algorithm does this deliberately 
so as to identify problematic dependencies. Because when architecture erodes, often many of those small numbers of dependencies in a reverse direction are the problematic dependencies. And finally, notice that there is this middle layer which has proprietary CAN, application layer, and virtual terminal client, which have no dependencies on each other. And this co these correspond to components within a layer which have no dependencies on each other. For instance, a common example that occurs often in software is a framework, which has multiple components sitting on top of it. In future videos, we'll see how we can use uh, the DSM and LATIX to organize and represent the architecture in terms of layers and components.